What is it, Sergeant? Captain, have you determined how long we'll stay here? Until the men and horses have had sufficient rest. Yes, sir. Hello there, Kentuck. Where'd you get that parcel? Shook him out of a persimmon tree. <laughs> You know, if I only had some sweet taters. What did you find out about the convoy with that supply of ammunition we're expecting? A messenger told me yesterday they was heading this way. How far out did he say they were? Well, thought they'd reach Fort Escambra in about two or three days. I hope so. We need those supplies. Oh, they'll get here. What makes you so sure? Why, don't you know who's heading that party? How should I know? Who? Why, your brother, Bill. <laughs> Bill, are you sure? Oh, say, I'll be glad to see that boy. He'll make a great soldier, Kentuck. Well, he'd have done better being a scout like me. Oh, now, wait a minute. Nobody could be a scout like you. Why, you're the best in Mississippi. <laughs> you got to have good soldiers, too. Yeah, they uh, do help, don't they? By the looks of those fresh Indian tracks I've seen here lately... I think they're congregating for trouble. We'll be ready for them. There they come. There's one engine out there. Well, I'll never scalp another white man. Here you are, Pa. Here, get this reload. Johnny, take the drum. Good luck to the soldiers will hear it. It's our only chance. Should this possum I hear something? Sounds like a drum. It is a drum. Why, it's the... drum I helped little Johnny Green play. It's the only one around here outside those at the post. I told him to use it in case of an Indian attack. Bugler, sound call to arms. Yes. But he doesn't even hear the drum. Sure he'll hear it. Didn't he show me how to make it? And didn't he say he'd come and run it? You ever heard me beat it? All present accounted for, sir. Forward! Ho! Column of two! I 
Got him! Hello, Johnny. Captain Jerry. I came as soon as I could. I knew you'd come. As soon as you heard our drum, you did hear it. Didn't you? You bet I did. How could I help it with the best little drummer in Mississippi beating it? Captain Jerry. Ah. Uh. I was going to... Johnny. Johnny. best little friend I ever had. <laughs> now, now, Ma, don't cry. It won't help us now. Thank you, Captain Jerry, for coming to help us. We were a long way off. We came as fast as we could. got out of your years in the army. This land, a chance to be murdered by savages. We ain't staying here any longer. Where'd we go? This is the only home we got. Home? A home. Even your children ain't safe. We can't leave our crops now after all this planting and plowing. Crops? What happened to our crops last year? Indians burned them right before harvest. That won't happen again, Mrs. Green, if I can help it. How are you going to stop engines from raiding and burning and dodging back across the line into Florida? You soldiers can't follow them there. If that War Department understood things here, they wouldn't hogtie us with orders not to go into Florida after those savages. Can talk. Kentuck, what are you doing there? Why, well, I'm only getting this powder and these muskets. Jumping keepers. Beauty, look. Better than anything our men have. Give an Indian a gun like this and his finger itches for just one target, a white man. All those Indians must have had rifles like that. How do you suppose they ever got hold of them? I don't know, but it's our job to find out. That rifle come from Florida, and a white man has been passing them out to them Indians. You can go betting on that. If I could get that through for General Jackson, War Department or no War Department, old Hickory would have those savages crying for a peace council. If we could just catch one of those Indians and make him talk. Making Indians talk is my meat. Sergeant, form your line. Yes, sir. Jumping jeepers. Been waiting all my life for just this chance. <laughs> all present in the counter for, sir. Sergeant, have a squad help the Green family to pack up and escort them to the post. Yes, sir. And see that little Johnny is. I understand, sir. And then send this message to General Jackson at Memphis. 
Tell him unless I receive orders to the contrary, within two days we're going into Florida after those Indians, you understand? But a courier can't get to Memphis and back in two days, even if he rode six horses to death going and coming. I know it. We're starting for Florida right now. Yes, sir. Forward! Pass! Ammunition wagons are coming down the road, headed this way. How many soldiers are there? About four. And a young lieutenant. How close are they? A quarter of a mile. Only five men? That'll well, make it easy for us. All you've got to do is to direct them into this lower road. That'll put them into Spanish territory. I'll see that they turn off right here. It's as easy as rolling off a log. I'll be waiting with the rest of my men. As Provo Marshal for Don Salvador Dominguez, it is my duty to arrest any armed Americans found in Spanish territory. Come with me, Toby. Have any help to you? Well, just adjusted my stirrup. Met up with any Indians? No, didn't see one. Bound for the American post, huh? Yeah. Bring us some more guns and ammunition to defend the border. That's good. You never can tell when these Indians will bust across the Florida line. Say, how far is it to the post from here? Well, by the North Road, it's about 20 miles. But if you take this new road, you can save yourself just about half that distance. I'm not too anxious to travel any farther than I have to. Well, in that case, Lieutenant, if you just take this south fork, you save yourself a lot of miles. Thanks. Better met up with you. That's all right. Good luck. Hold on. Left! Work! Fellas, get back out of sight. And don't start shooting unless they resist. Howdy, Lieutenant. State your name and business. I'm Lieutenant William Crawford, bound for the American post, Fort Escambria. Then you must have misplaced your compass. This road leads to Porta Luna. Porta Luna? But that's in Spanish territory. Yes, and that's where this road leads. Why, I was told this was a shortcut to the American post in the Pearl River. I guess we'd better turn around and take that other road. That's what you ought to have done in the first place. But it's too late now. What's going to stop me? You and your outfit's under arrest for leading an armed expedition into Florida. So who do you think you are? I am Colonel Holston, Provo Marshal for West Florida. Tell your men to dismount and stack their arms. You men keep your arms. I'm in command here. I'm warning you not to resist arrest. Turn those wagons around and get back into America's territory. Oh, oh. 
Besides smuggling arms and ammunition, you've got a murder charge to answer. We got them. All but the drivers. They gave up. See that they don't talk. Yeah. What are you going to do? Murder those drivers? Keep him under guard. I don't want to turn him over to Major Strutto. Get half of this ammunition and muskets and put in one of our wagons and take it to Chief Bolick's tribe. The rest I'll turn over to the Magistrado as evidence against the prisoners. border. You men know that in crossing this boundary line, we're invading a foreign country and without orders. As your officer, I'm responsible, but still I don't want to take any man that isn't willing to go. You can count on all of us, Captain Crawford. Anyone who wants to turn back can. The rest, forward! When's that possum going to be ready? Pretty quick. I gotta crush it a little bit more. <laughs> and you were the one that wanted me to leave this behind. I guess I wasn't hungry then. In Tuck, I figured that band of Indians would slow down when they got across the border where they'd feel safe from pursuit. But what about all them other Indian trails heading the same way? Yes, I know. There must be a war party gathering somewhere. I'll smell them out. Yeah? <laughs> About all you can smell right now is that possum. Huh. Well, I ever heard of you turning down any good eating. Not that I can remember of. Yes? A sentry just heard a sound like wagon wheels. Off over there, sir. Wagon wheels? Well, that's funny. They can't be Indians. They must be white men. What's your recollection of any settlements down around here? None that I know of, Jerry, except Punta Luna. Yes, I guess you're right. Let's have a look. Come along, Kentuck. American soldiers. Rush them while they're reloading. You 
come in, make a thorough search. What's the idea of firing on us? Where were you hit? Oh, don't, don't, don't move me. I'm all right here. But thanks just the same. Captain Crawford? I've seen you somewhere before. I'm... I'm Toby Simmons from Natchez. I was in your Mississippi Regiment of Volunteers at, at the Battle of New Orleans. Oh, yes, I remember you. And old... old Hickory himself came down along the lines and and commended me for bravery. Tell me, what are you doing here? Why didn't you take up that land the government offered you like the rest of the boys? Uh, I thought this was a much easier way to, to make money. Captain, this wagon's full of arms and ammunition. So this is your easier money, eh, Toby? Where were you taking it? Wouldn't you like to... Captain, I haven't got much longer to go. I'll tell you that and something else you might like to know. But first, you've got to do something for me. I will if I can. Get word to my people in Natchez. Tell them that... Tell them I... What happened to me? Only, Captain, tell him I was fighting on your side. All right, Toby. I'll do it the first chance I get. <laughs> oh, thanks. You always were. Never mind the compliments. Where were you taking this ammunition? We were taking it to Chief Bolick of the Seminole Indians in exchange for furs. Yeah. What else were you going to tell me? No. Well, Funny thing, running into you here. When I just seen your brother, Bill Crawford, yesterday. Bill? Hey, Jerry, stuff in this wagon belongs to U.S. Army. Where'd you get this? Looks like some of the boxes your brother was convoyed. Speak up, where'd you get this? Bill was arrested over here across the line. The Florida Provo Marshal men shot his soldiers. What happened to Bill? They... They took him to Porta Luna. Porta Luna. I have to go to Porta Luna to see the Spanish magistrate. Jump and keep us yet before they do something to Bill. Sergeant. Yes, sir. We'll go on ahead. Follow with your men. Camp just outside the town. And uh, bring this ammunition in case he needs convincing. Very good, Captain. Ah. Majesty, Philip, by the grace of God, King of Spain, and of Uzia, Aragon, and of all his dominions beyond the sea, I, Don Salvador Dominguez, Intendente and Magistrado of West Florida, find you, William Crawford, guilty of assault upon and murder of one of His Majesty's guards, the loyal performance of his duty. But I tell you, I only defended myself against the attack of this renegade's men. Silence. It was a trick to seize the property of the American government. And this man is the fellow who tricked me into crossing you the line. You have had your trial. I wish to extend to the Provo Marshal, Senor Alston, our congratulations, and to his men for their brave efforts on behalf of the crown. And we now sentence you to be executed by a firing squad. As I no longer have any Spanish soldiers here, may I ask you, Senor Holston, to supply the men for this purpose? With pleasure, Don Salvador. Jenkins, take six men and the prisoner immediately. No, no, wait, Senor Jenkins. Not now. Tomorrow morning, custom provides that an officer is entitled to a full day and night to make his peace with his maker. 
As you wish, Don Salvador. Keep him safe until morning. You would dare to stand in the way of Senorita Rosa Maria Dominguez? Provo Marshal Holston said not to let anyone in. Impudent Americano. Does Senor Holston now presume to give orders even in my father's house? And the goods the prisoner was transporting, you have them securely put away? I have taken good care of them, Don Salvador. Stored in the warehouse. Ah, buenos dias, my dear. Buenos dias, Papa. And Senor Provo Marshal. Where is it you are going, Rosita Mia? With your bonnet and your coach robe? With your permission, Papacito. I would like the coach to drive down to see my cousin, Margarita. That's eight miles away. You shouldn't go that far out of town without my men to protect you. But I have my dueña, and my coachman carries weapons. Think of the danger of Indians. We were not troubled by such a danger before you arrived, Senor Holston. But Senor Holston is right, Rosita Mia. Many, many more Indians have lately come into West Florida. We should be grateful for the kind protection of Senor Holston and his men since the Governor General cannot spare us anything. But, Papa, I have been so many times and never... Why do you have to go so often to see me? The company is more congenial. And, uh, very well, uh, Rosa. Perhaps it is safe enough in the daytime. You may take the coach. Thank you, Papa. But you must be back before sunset, or you cannot go again. Yes, Papa Tito. I promise. Hasta luego. Dios mediante. Good day, Your Excellency. Listen, Holston. Blue George came back with bad news. What's happened now? Well, American soldiers came over the border and took that ammunition wagon you sent to Chief Bullock. American soldiers here in Florida? Are you sure about this? Pale faces kill Toby. Take uh, wagon. How many braves has Chief Bullock? Many. Like uh, Tree, Lee, Creek, Seminole, all red men together now. What's more? Blue George, you go tell Chief Bullock that I give two guns for every American soldier scout and for every button off their uniforms, one horn full of powder. And for their leader scout, I give 20 guns. You, George, go fast. Hurry, Pedro, do something. I'm sorry, senorita, but I cannot lift the coach alone. Besides, if I could, the axle lift is broken. Oh, but you must. You must, Pedro. I promised my father I would be home before dark. And the sun will be set before two hours of dawn. Somebody's coming! Quick, senorita, into the coach! Who is it, Pedro? Go, America. <laughs> Impudent Americano. Let them pass, Pedro. Let them be on their way as soon as possible. But, senorita... I thought maybe they could help to repair the coach. You better put on those irons, you'll hurt yourself. What's the matter? The axle, it is broke. I see. And such a pretty girl to hate Americanos. I'm sorry I haven't the time, senorita, but a detachment of my men will be along in a little while, and uh, I'll leave an order for them to repair your coach.
Give this to my men, they'll help you. But, senor, in several hours it will be dark. Yes, that's true, but you're not without protection, and uh, I must get to Potaluna without delay. Potaluna? That's my home. That's where I want to go. Really? Well, I uh, could get you there, but I might be considered an impudent Americano to suggest the method. How do you mean, senor? My uh, horse uh, carries double. You are impudent. <laughs> oh, senor, I promised my father I would be home before dark. Perhaps I accept your offer. No, 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 no. It is not profit. He will have to hold you with his arms. And that would be impudent, wouldn't it? Yes. Perhaps I could forget such impudence to be home before it is dark. I'm at your service, senorita. What's that? Kentuck, who put that in my saddle? It's my rose blossom. Oh, I didn't think it'd mind. It ain't hurt much. Senor Capitan. Yes? I forgot. Forgot what? My duenio. She must come with us. Kentuck! Throw that possum away and bring the duena. Jumpin' jeepers. I'd rather have the possum. You kept your promise to your father, Senorita Rosa. The sun is just setting. Gracias to you, Senor. Senor Capitan, have you ever heard the old saying that when two people together see the sunset, they will meet again tomorrow? <laughs> I expect to be on my way back home before then. You are in great haste to leave us. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to see the magistrate immediately. You wish to see my father? Your father is the... Why, yes, Senor. Don Salvador Dominguez is my papa. He represents the governor of Hispanola and Florida, who lives in Havana. I will take you to him, senor. You will be very grateful to the rescuer of his daughter. Gracias. That ain't no cat. That's a possum. Didn't you ever eat possum? No. Why, it's good. Wait a minute. I'll just give you a slice. No, no, senor. Only beggars see them on the street. Come inside. <laughs> and as you see, we were not set upon by Indians. Most fortunately, this kind gentleman and his follower brought us home. On his horse? You both rode one horse? And you, you, you presume such intimacy with the Senorita Rosa Maria Dominguez, my daughter? I couldn't leave her out there with only that coachman to guard her. The proper gentleman would have stayed to guard her. Sir, my business couldn't wait. I left orders for my men to help with the carriage. Soldiers? Americanos? Here in Florida? Is this an invasion? Oh, no, senor. That is, unless you force it to be. 
and I hope that won't be necessary. So you are an enemy, Senor Capitan? I hope not. Don Salvador, I understand your provo marshal arrested my brother, Bill Crawford, and killed his soldiers. They were in my territory, seeking to start a revolt against my government. Bill Crawford had no intention of coming into your country, unless he had a brush with the Indians and was driven across the border. Oh, no, senor. He was seen to cross of his own volition. He was bringing ammunition to the Indians in Spanish territory. Sir, my brother is a soldier. He wouldn't arm savages to kill white people. If you will turn him over to me, I'll take him back home. And my government will make suitable apologies and explanations. That is impossible, senor. Your brother, while resisting arrest, murdered one of my... Robo Gops. He was tried and condemned for murder. You mean he's to be executed? It is most unfortunate, senor. Perhaps senor Capitan speaks the truth regarding his brother being in our country. Silence, Rosita. Let me talk to him. Maybe I can clear up this matter and convince you of his innocence. Surely, Papa. He will not refuse senor Capitan a chance to visit his brother. Perhaps you are right. Senita. Senor, we are sorry. Circumstances are so unfortunate. But we can only offer to you our consolation and the opportunity for a last visit with the prisoner. You will write a path permitting Senor Capitan to talk with his brother. I beg your pardon, Senorita, but my orders must come from Don Salvador. May God the honor, Jose. Si, Senor. Thank you, Senor. And thank you, senorita. Uh, now, aren't you glad I give you a taste? It was, as you said. Good, senor. Good yeah. boy, where are you? In here, captain. Come along. Why, we, we ain't finished eating this possum. They're planning on shooting Bill at daylight. What? Why, he can't do that. They not only can, but will, unless we can find a way to stop them. Why, don't put Jesus. Who are you? What do you want? I have a pass here to see Bill Crawford. I guess it's all right, but it should have been signed by the Provo Marshal. What's the matter? Isn't Don Salvador's signature enough? I guess so. You can go in. Wait. Leave the saber out here. You wait out here. Uh, I may want that back. Where are you going? Why can't I go in? Young fellow's a friend of mine. No. Oh. Only for five minutes. No, the pass only calls for one. Oh, I just wanted to go in and say hello to the young man. No. Bill, where are you? Jerry! How'd you find out I was here? We got Toby Simmons yesterday. He told me just before he died. Did he tell you all about it? No, he didn't live long enough to say much. The Provo guards fooled me into crossing the Florida line and then attacked my convoy. So that's it. Did you see the magistrate, Jerry? Yeah, but he seems to take orders from his Provo marshal. Then there isn't much chance for me. Wait a minute. Give me time to think. Say, you look great in that lieutenant's uniform. I'm proud of you. <laughs> well, it isn't just the way I planned for you to first see me wearing it, Jerry. I got my commission three weeks ago from the governor of Mississippi. And I persuaded him to let me bring the arms and ammunition to you. Kind of wanted to surprise you. Instead, I... Instead, you stubbed your toe. Don't let that bother you, boy. Lots of older officers have done the same thing. Who went in there? Some American captain. I didn't want to let him in, but he had a pass. He had a pass? Who signed it? Don Salvador. No, so he's interfering in my business, is he? My orders were not to let anyone see this prisoner. Yes, sir. I 
didn't get much of a chance to show I could be a soldier, Jerry. But I'll try to show him a real soldier tomorrow morning at daylight. Oh, brace up, brace get up. Get your hands out of there. Hello, Holston. Captain Jerry Crawford. You're not in Mississippi now. This is Spanish territory. You seem to be doing better here in Florida than you did in your own state. That's the fellow who killed my soldiers and then charged me with murder. Time's up. Come on, you've been here long enough. Sit tight, Bill. Goodbye, soldier. Goodbye, Captain. Papacito, what harm can there be in waiting until you're absolutely sure the young lieutenant is guilty before shooting him? Rosita Mia, I am sure. My provo marshal has given me all the facts in the case. And even the prisoner does not deny that he was arrested here in Florida convoying arms and ammunition. At his trial, he said a stranger misdirected him. But why did he resist arrest and fire on my guards? If you were innocent, you could have proven it to me, and I would have sent him home. But he is so young and inexperienced. But he is only a boy. <laughs> Rosita Mia, you must leave this matter to the judgment of more mature minds. Tell me, why are you so interested in this uh, Americano, uh, in this uh, stranger? Why, it is only, only that Senor Capitan did us a great favor today. You know, when my coach broke down. I don't wish to be reminded of your behavior in riding into town in his arms. Enter. Don't Salvador, I've seen my brother. I'm most sorry, senor, that your meeting was, uh, was under such regrettable conditions. Did you learn anything? Anything that might help? Yes, senorita, I think I understand all the circumstances. Lieutenant Crawford didn't know that he'd entered your country until he was ambushed by your guards. Getting him to cross the line with a shipment of guns was a result of a plot. A plot? By whom, senor? By your provo guard. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Your Holston is my good friend and protector. Nevertheless, one of his guards purposely misdirected the convoy. Is that all you have to offer for the prisoner's defense, Senor Capitan? That's only a start. Your provo marshal is selling guns to the Indians who are using them against our white settlers. You offer words, Senor, not proof. Obviously, you didn't investigate this man before you made him your military commander, which gave him a chance to commit crimes that might involve our governments. Holston is a notorious American criminal, a river pirate I drove from the Mississippi. Now, if you still intend to execute my brother before I can prove his innocence, I'll handle the situation in my own way. Papa mio, why must his brother be executed before El Capitan can offer his proof to you? I'm only asking for a chance to communicate with General Jackson in order that he may send you proof that Holston is a criminal. I, uh, I will delay the execution until you have had time to present your proof. Thank you, senor. Thank you, senorita. And now, senor capitan, you may return with your soldiers to your own country. If you don't mind, we'll remain. You see, I don't share your trust in that provo marshal. Buenas noches, senor. We'll camp just outside of town. When is not senorita. And come at ease, men. Any luck, Captain? Bill is in a tight spot. I must communicate with General Jackson immediately. I'll have a courier ready at once, sir. Very good. What's the matter with me going? Oh, no. I can use you to good advantage right here. When is notice, Papa Cito? What is not escaped on me? What's the meaning of this? It is just 
for assessing your Provo Marshal in order to postpone the execution. First, you let that American visit him without my consent. And now you send me an order to hold up the execution of my prisoner. Your prisoner, senor? That's what I said, my prisoner. You are my Provo Marshal, senor. But I have not transferred to you all the authority vested in me. There are still a few details which I wish to investigate before this sentence is carried out. What details? I will let you know at the proper time, Senor Marshal. Instead of listening to that captain, you want to take my advice and let me put him before a firing squad. When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. But in the meantime, my orders will be carried out. And who's to enforce your orders? My men? Climb down off your high horse. From now on, you stay with your civil affairs. Leave my house at once. As the new military commander, my first act will be to carry out the death sentence on Lieutenant Crawford. Jenkins. Have a firing squad ready at daylight and carry out the order for the execution of Lieutenant Crawford. No one's going to kill one of my guards and not pay for it. Post guards around the house and see that nobody leaves until I say so. You mean that he can't go out either? I said no one leaves. Now I believe everything Senor El Capitan said about you. It makes no difference what you believe. You are my prisoner. And when that Captain Crawford returns, he'll find me in command. I must see Captain Jerry Crawford at once. It's all right, miss. Captain! What's happened, Senorita? Oh, you must come quickly to Portaloon and bring all your soldiers. What's happened? The Provo Marshal is holding my father prisoner, and I heard him say he was going to shoot your brother as soon as it is light. Come on, Captain, let's get going. Now, wait! The minute Houston hears all of us coming into town, he'll execute Don Salvador and Bill, too. Well, what will you do? Where's the execution place? At the patio wall near the jail. Sergeant! Yes, sir. I'll take Kentucky and a half a dozen men. The others will stay here with you. Very good, sir. Houston must not suspect we've left camp. Be sure your men here make plenty of noise. I'll keep them singing at the top of their voices. That's a good idea, and be sure they sing loud enough to be heard in town. Yes, sir. And uh, take good care of the uh, senorita and her duena. That will be a pleasure. And if you hear any firing, come on in with all your men. Yes, sir. Sit down. You're making me nervous. You. You! Go bring a bottle of His Excellency's best wine. But I am not a servant. Gone. Yes. Go with him. be nice. Rare wine from His Excellency's cellar. Music by Captain Crawford's Mississippi Volunteers. We fight all right with all our might. The Mississippi Volunteers. We're hard in face of peril. On guard when danger nears. We'll throw the foe. We've got to go. The Mississippi Volunteers. No matter how black the way may seem and all our hopes are gone, don't forget that the darkest hour comes ahead of the dawn. We lead, let others follow. Take heed, the way with tears. We'll fight for right with all our might. The Mississippi Volunteers. You know, Holton, I kind of been looking for trouble. I suppose that captain would try to attack the town before his brother gets executed. 
They're too busy singing. Maybe you'd better route out your firing squad. I guess it's light enough now for the boys to see what they're shooting at. Forget that the darkest hour comes away with the dawn. We leave and others follow. Take heed away with fear. We'll fight for right with all our might. The Mississippi volunteers. Daybreak, senor. Something's got to happen. Pretty soon, senorita. Get out, Lieutenant. Senor Holstrom, you are murdering an innocent boy. I believe you gave the order. You should be before that firing squad. Halt! Take him up to the wall. That's it! Bugler, call to arms! Boy, you just got here in time. We're not out of it yet. Yeah.
Nothing, Jerry. But I'd sure like to get the fella to hit me. There he is. It's over. And Huck, look after Bill. Are you hurt badly, senor? No. It's a good thing for me that Provo Marshal of yours isn't a better shot. Where'd you come from? Some shot. Why, I could have poured these hair at twice the distance. Do you remember what I told you, Senor Capitan? That when two people together see the sunset, they meet again tomorrow? Only tomorrow? Tomorrow. And tomorrow. 